Before we start off today's video, if you guys would like to join my Discord server, link will be in the description and it will also be in a pinned comment. But anyway, enough of that, enough to say this time, let's get right into the video. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This here is the BMW 128Ti and it's basically BMW's first front wheel drive sporty car. Now it's not the first front wheel drive BMW because of course that was the 2 Series Grand Tourer that MPV 2 Series that, you know, a lot of UK police use. But anyway, and because this car is front wheel drive, and because it's got the same power, and because it's a hatchback, it can finally rival cars like the Golf GTI and the Ford Focus ST. Now before, they were of course rear wheel drive, so they couldn't really rival it because that was a different league, and they were more powerful as well and the M140i which was of course rear wheel drive but it was all wheel drive in different markets so that's even more out the league but anyway it's got rivals now it's got competition and it's no longer in a league of its own but anyway that is it so let's see how it fares When it comes to the exterior, the front, frankly, it just isn't it for me. But to be fair, no BMW front is it to me. And that's not even fair. It's just, yeah, BMW don't deserve love for this. Grill, I'm glad it's not like 7 Series level or like IX level, but it's still big and it just looks hideous. That grill at the bottom, it does look like it's smiling at me and I'm kind of freaked out and I'm actually walking away from my phone right now with the microphone because I don't want to see it anymore. But you do obviously have the red stuff near the vents that obviously does add some colour to it and it does make the car look distinctive because, well, I don't think the Golf GTI has that. I actually don't know myself and I know the Focus ST doesn't. Now when it does come to the side, I do like it. It is very sharp. It is very angular, it's definitely the best looking side profile of any one series that we've ever had. I do like it and of course you have got the red skirts at the bottom and you've got that TI badge as well. Now if you do get it in blue or red, that is changed to black, not red, so do be aware of that. And something else about that TI badging is, well, on Carwell, Matt said that the TI badge was well flaking already. And well, if that's the case for all of them, then that's not good, is it? This is a BMW. It's not a cheap car. It's a premium brand. It's built with quality. Although I don't think reliability is the quality like a Toyota, but either way. It shouldn't be a sticker. I mean, on a Skoda, sure. But on a BMW, which rivals, what, Mercedes, Audi, even Volkswagen, which is less premium, but still premium. It's still not great. So BMW... What the f***? When it does come to the rear, I think this is the best angle of the car. The lights do make it look angry and it does look like it's squatting down as well, like it's ready to pounce like a cat or a cheetah. You obviously got two exhausts which are real. You obviously got your boot spoiler as well that adds some sportiness. And you have got the red around that vents as well, but according to Carwell and Matt, those are fake. So again BMW, I ask, what the f***? When it does come to the interior, it's, well, to me, it's designed very well. You have got red dotted all around the place, along with TI badging on the armrest, so that adds colour. you also got different shades of grey, so that does make it very grey, but at least it's not just one grey where it's just bland. And while everything is laid out where you expect it, you know, the satin nav does look like it's roughly in the same panel as the gauge cluster and all that. But something about that gauge cluster is that it's not as good as Mercedes or Audi where you can adjust it to show XX something, whatever. In this it's just, well, digital analog gauges. Yeah, that's not great. Now, you are separated from your passenger because obviously you have got that thing that sections both of you off. Now, this is good because it does give a sporty feel, but it also means that nothing is too low down where you have to look and be distracted. So everything is all risen up. So it's roughly in eye level or just quickly looking down at a glance. But that's it. When it comes to the performance, 
it has a 2 litre inline 4 cylinder with a turbo. Now I will get on with this engine in anything else, so you'll have to hold off to that. Now of course this is less powerful than the M135i, so it has 261 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It is of course front wheel drive, not rear wheel drive or all wheel drive like the M140i in a different market. Weight is 1445 kilograms and again in anything else I'll get to it. But still 1.4 and half tons is still quite a lot. I mean sure there's a lot of technology but you know it's still quite American fatness. Gearbox is well the real letdown here, it's an 8 speed automatic. Now sure there's a manual mode and you know I'm pretty sure some people won't have a problem but of course the manual is dying I don't even know why. I don't know if it's because people are just becoming lazy or because there's more traffic and people don't want to just do bite and point and clutch anymore and they don't want to get exercise in their left leg. Either way unfortunately there is no manual option on the Golf and the Focus you do get both options of a manual and an automatic even if the automatic is sold more on the Golf GTI which I believe it is. But at least there is a manual option and some people do buy it. Nota 60 is in 6.1 seconds and the top speed is of course the usual German classic limited to 155 miles an hour. Now I have seen a Nota 60 be 5.8 seconds somewhere in some article but either way we'll take it as around 6 seconds and we'll take these figures as around the same performance as a Focus ST and a Golf GTI. Now when it does come to the practicality well, because there's no rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, the boot is of course bigger. So it is 380 litres. Now, 380 litres is actually, is literally on par with the Golf GTI. Pretty much the same. I think it's like, what, two litres difference between them? But who cares about that? This has been a big problem with the old BMWs, which were rear wheel drive. So now, this is the first practical one series there's been. So that is one good thing. When it does come to the rear seats the second good thing is that legroom is also improved because it's no longer rear wheel drive so legroom will knock yourself out you'll be happy headroom on the other hand that's not the greatest it is quite tight if you are over six foot you will struggle somewhat but if you're a kid then well some kids aren't even six foot so frankly they should be fine back there i don't see a problem at all with this when it does come to the handling well, it does have a limited slip differential and the chassis has been unstiffened. You're thinking, what? Unstiffened? Are you mad? Well, it's been done to reduce the understeer because, of course, it is front wheel drive and front wheel drive, well, they're known for understeering somewhat if you push them. But this means that the BMW, well, it is absolutely great. Obviously, there is no flare like you'd get on the old rear wheel drive cars. You're not going to get any proper oversteer, unfortunately. But you do have that limited slip differential which means that power is sent to whichever wheel needs it and whichever wheel doesn't need it and so grip is plentiful and you can be flung into a corner and then flung out the other way. Perfect grip, you won't lose traction at all, absolutely great and there is also electronics to reduce wheel spin but either way it handled really well especially thanks to that chassis unstiffening and that limited slip diff. So this is definitely on par with the handling of the Focus and the Golf GTI. And the car actually rode decently well. So if you've got a family, then they shouldn't be complaining too much. If they are, well then, I think you need to find a new family. But anything else worth noting? Well, here we come to the BMW 135i. Now, the BMW 135i is 80 kilograms heavier than the 128i. That's because it has a four-wheel drive system. And without all that differential and drive shafts and prop shaft, then of course you lose some weight. Now, also something about this with the engine. It is pretty much roughly the same engine. It is roughly just the same block. Now, it's also the same block roughly as in the Z4 and the Toyota Supra, the basic one. I know both are technically the same car, but you know, we'll just include it. Of course, in the Mini Cooper S as well. Now the Mini Cooper S does have a dramatic power downgrade, but it's still roughly the same two litre turbo. And of course the Morgan Plus 4, which is well, how many you blivering idiot? And it's a wooden car, so well, there you go. Now what does TI stand for? It stands for Turismo, Inter 
Nazia Nail. I just said nail like my toenail, which doesn't sound very German and I actually got that from an article that said it didn't sound very German. So yes, I'm copying that, but frankly, it's true. Now the first car to have the TI badge was the 1800. I hope this is correct, I read it in an article somewhere. I hope I've got that correct, otherwise I'll get the BMW community just, well, me in the comments. Now the last BMW to see the TI badge was the 325 TI Compact, which is well compact. BMW 3 Series, that's all there is to that. But now we've brought the TI badge back with the 128Ti, I wonder when it will be next. Well anyway, what is the verdict? Well the pros are, it has good legroom, it has decent performance, it has good rear looks and a good side profile, the interior is laid out well, it does have a good boot capacity and it does have modest handling, it is pretty good, however the cons of this car are the headroom is tight, but if you're over 6 foot that is. The front just isn't it, but like I said, no BMW front is it. These days anyway. Back in the day, 2000s, perfect. Nowadays, bloody hell, they're the size of, I don't know, a tree? That's not really a fair comparison. Uh, the size of my wardrobe, basically. No manual option is a big one. At least offer the option, like the GTI and the ST does. And that TI badging, which, well, in Matt's review, was flaking. And so, what's up with that? BMW, tell me. Please, give me an answer. You know, cheap stuff on an expensive car. You, you let me know. But anyway, that concludes the review of the BMW 128 Ti, or the BMW 128 Ti, depending on who you are. But anyway, if you guys would like to check out my reaction channel, Dyson Spheres. Type 1 is to build a ring of orbit. Basically, lampshades, not bloody like Dyson Spheres. Wirelessly transfer the energy back to the home planet. A Type 2 is to build a bubble of satellites around the That's star. A golf that ball. That's a golf ball. That's a golf ball now. But not all of it. And a Type 3 is to completely swallow the star with a solid shell of matter. That's a disco ball. I will leave a link to that in the description below. If you could subscribe, that would be absolutely great. But anyway, this is next week's car, let me know in the comments below what it is. And speaking of comments, if you want me to review a car, then you can also let me know what car to review in the comments below. And if there is enough information, then I will happily oblige and do it within a week or a couple of weeks. But anyway, I will see you guys next week for that car. Peace.